Several big YouTubers and blogs have addressed the rumor of the headphone jack being removed from the upcoming iPhone 7, and most of them talk about it like it's a bad thing. Now, personally, I don't even really think that this rumor holds much water, but I'd like to play devil's advocate, if you will, and explain why getting rid of the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is actually not a bad idea. Now, there are a lot of people that hop onto the idea that Bluetooth headphones are getting really pretty good and that many people won't even need wired headphones in a couple of years. And honestly, there's quite a bit of merit to that. There are Bluetooth headphones that are getting pretty decent. However, as a snobby audiophile, I cannot stand Bluetooth. Even the new aptX Bluetooth, which is making its way into some newer smartphones and laptops, is a lot better than standard Bluetooth, but it's still a far cry short of the quality that a decent wired headphone can provide. A lot of people don't care. If you don't care, you're happy with Bluetooth, that's great. And that's great for Apple, problem solved. That said, there are a lot of people like me who either refuse to use Bluetooth because we're kind of snobby, or people who have already purchased wired headphones, spent a lot of money on headphones, and don't want to have to buy another pair of Bluetooth headphones if theirs work fine. So in this video, I'm going to explain the advantages to using wired headphones through the lightning connector as opposed to the traditional headphone jack. Behind every single headphone jack on a phone or iPod or laptop, really anything, is a DAC or digital to analog converter and an amplifier. Now this diagram will help illustrate how things work. Very briefly, in this case the iPhone, sends digital data to the DAC, which converts a digital signal, which is usually binary, ones and zeros, into an analog current or signal, electricity. Now, after your music is converted into an electric charge, the signal is literally amplified or increased by the amp. And that's what gives your headphones sufficient voltage to produce sound waves, which are really just air pressure waves. Now, it's a very complex topic and I've dumbed it down to the bare minimum so we can get universal understanding. But yes, what's important to understand is that your iPhone, really every device you have, has a DAC and an amplifier built in. Now, if you haven't noticed, space inside an iPhone is pretty limited, and DACs and amps can get pretty expensive really quickly. So Apple historically hasn't really focused on making the DAC or amp inside the iPhone sound fantastic for two reasons, to minimize cost and to reduce phone thickness. So because of this, there's often not sufficient amplification to power less efficient headphones like the Odyssey LCD3 I own, which barely even make noise when plugged in at max volume. However, even cheaper headphones like the very popular Audio-Technica ATH-M50s, which probably a lot of you own, will sound much, much better when plugged into a higher quality DAC and a higher quality amp versus your iPhone. So even with cheaper headphones, you're not getting the full experience. You're not driving the headphones to their full potential if you're using the iPhone's built-in DAC and amp. So if Apple moved the lightning connector, which is digital, uh, if they move to that instead of the headphone jack, the DAC and the amplifier would move from inside the phone to outside the phone. Now, why is this good? Well, the advantage is that Apple would sell an adapter with a DAC and an amp built in for people who want to use their old headphones. Now, yeah, this adapter, as many have speculated, will probably be not, not be very cheap, but that's not because it's simply adapting one thing to another. There is a DAC and an amp built into this little dongle. Now, that may sound pretty bland. It may sound troublesome to get all of the components that were in your phone out of your phone and then having to plug an adapter to get stuff back. But this is where it gets exciting. If Apple does this, if they make their own adapter, other brands, audio brands, headphone brands, would be able to sell adapters of their own that could integrate higher quality components, which would help you take better advantage of your existing headphones. You could get a better experience from the headphones you already own. Now, many will be quick to say, well, there are already amps and portable stuff on the market that you can plug your iPhone into, and that's true. However, those products, those external amplifiers you plug into your phone, still rely on the iPhone's DAC and pre-amplified signal. So being able to do all of the processing in one unit would produce much better results. Now, there's a lot of people that will say, but I don't want a dongle, and this is where things get even more exciting. The biggest part is that new headphones will start to come out with a lightning cable that already has a DAC and amp integrated. Now, some manufacturers may do it in the ear cup. Some manufacturers may do it in the cable itself. Philips 
has already taken a shot at this and they put the DAC and the amp inside the headphones. But the first really good headphone to take advantage of this technology and this design is the Odyssey Sign, which will be released in April. And this may actually lend credence to the merit of this rumor. Odyssey has been a very, very high-end manufacturer for years and they just recently got put into the Apple Store. It's a little suspicious that they've developed this lightning connector headphone that will be released in the upcoming months, just a few months before the new iPhone comes out. Something to think about. But I got to listen to this Odyssey Sign headphone at CES and I was blown away. These headphones will ship with two cables. One cable, which will work with all of your regular devices, and then another cable, which is a lightning cable. And the lightning cable integrates, you've guessed it, a DAC and an amp. So with a regular 3.5 millimeter headphone cable, you'll be able to listen to music in whatever device you've always listened to it. Now I listened with a 3.5 millimeter headphone plugged into an iPad, which remember, if it's plugged into an iPad, it's using the iPad's internal DAC and amp. And the headphones sounded nice, nothing spectacular, but, but good. However, when I changed the cable to the lightning cable, which had its own DAC and its own amp, and plugged into the lightning connector of the iPad, I was blown away. The headphones sounded like they were plugged into a really, really good desktop amplifier. And that's because in a roundabout way, it was a good amp. The one built right into the cable. So headphones act and sound differently with different amplification types, different DACs, and who better than the headphone manufacturer themselves to design and pair a perfect DAC and amp right from the factory. People buy headphones, but they don't drive them to their full potential because they're underpowered most of the time. So imagine you've got your Audio-Technica ATHM50 you already bought. Imagine that Audio-Technica sold a $30 to $50 removable cable that was designed to work with the headphones you already own, but headphones that integrated a DAC and an amp designed specifically to work and to power those headphones to their full potential. That's incredible. That takes portable fidelity to a whole new level. Your $150 headphones that you've never listened to at their full potential will now sound as good as they possibly can. And if Apple changes to the new lightning connector, new compatible headphones will pop up within weeks. Now, there are a lot of people that seem to forget that Apple is an extremely powerful company, naysayers that say, well, if Apple does this, headphone manufacturers aren't going to comply. There's going to be dongles. You'll have to use a dongle. It will suck. You can't charge at the same time. And that's just wrong. Apple is very, very successful. And companies conform to what Apple makes them do. If we quickly backtrack to the year 2007, there was the infamous recessed headphone jack on the original iPhone. Apple did it for pure aesthetics. And because of this, because there was this recessed headphone jack, there was outrage because there were essentially no headphones on the market at that time, which had a little connector, a jack, that would fit into that skinny little port. So for a few months, people like Belkin and Griffin took advantage of that market by selling $15 to $20 adapters. But eventually, pretty quickly actually, within the next uh, couple months or year, the entire market moved towards this thinner headphone jack as a result. And today, in 2016, you almost can't even buy a headphone with a fat connector. And that's because of none other than Apple. Now, since 2007, Apple has become even more powerful. There are complete industries that revolve around Apple's success. So we can naturally disregard the notion that headphone manufacturers will say, eh, we're not going to offer headphones with lightning cables because they will. And if you don't want to buy new headphones, fine. Use the adapter from Apple or from a third party that will make your headphones sound even better than they do on your current iPhone. And if you don't want cables at all, that's even better. Bluetooth works great and Bluetooth will only continue to get better. It will be several years, I believe, until it gets to the same quality of a wired connection, if ever, but I have faith that one day we'll get there. Again, I still don't really believe that Apple's going to remove the headphone jack in the first place. I think this rumor is pretty shaky to begin with, but if they do, it's not going to be as bad as everyone makes it sound. In fact, it may even revolutionize practical, portable, and high fidelity audio. That's all for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, and comment. And as always, stay snazzy.